Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to a new section. Now this section is little important. We need to change our mindset, we need to change our flow as well because this is really really important. Now we're going to talk about the concurrency, parallelism, a bit of about the mutex, channel, go coroutines and a bunch of other things. Now the reason why I'm saying that we need to change our mindset as well as the working approach is so far whatever the projects we have built up, even the mini folders, while loop, for loop, they are complete in itself. So the project actually work, it, it does the job what it is intended to do. Now we're not going to focus on that. Now the goal is not to just complete the stuff, the goal is to understand the things, why they are happening, what they are actually doing and what's the goal of these uh, things. And in, in order to make sure these applications are properly understood by you, the reasons of using the mutex, there is a, a read-write mutex, RW mutex. So in order to make sure that you understand the properly, I'll give you examples and a fictitious use case scenario. And these scenarios sometimes does the job, sometimes doesn't ju just do the job. So that's why I said, change the mindset from here onwards. All the tutorials will be a little bit more theoretical heavy. I'll try to give you enough of the code examples and the syntax so that you can follow up. But again, a little bit different mindset is required up here. So starting with a little bit of the theory, let's go ahead and work on with that. First, we're going to talk about concurrency and parallelism. Now, this is the most important concept, and I'm just giving you these two diagrams uh, about the concurrency and parallelism. But before we go there, I would like to give you an example of using Instagram or Twitter, whatever is your favorite social media application. Mine is Instagram, so we're going to talk about Instagram. So let's just say you are eating your food, maybe you are eating rice and uh, there is a notification in your phone which is an Instagram notification and you are also feeling hot so you want to turn on the air conditioner or your fan. Now you can do it through concurrency uh, or you can do it in parallelism also. So what is concurrency and how do you do it? So you are eating rice so you don't check your phone while eating the food. So that means you are not giving even the parallelism or the concurrency. You just do one task at a time. You just eat the food, you don't check the mobile phone and you also don't turn on the air condition because that's what you do at one time. But on the other hand, there is a scenario where you are eating the food, so the notification come in, you left the plate, you picked up the phone, you check the notification, you put down the phone down, then you turn on the AC, then you turn off, uh, you put down the remote, you look back on Instagram, you put the phone down, then you start again while eating your rice. Now this is the first thing, which is known as concurrency. You are allowing yourself to get involved into doing multiple tasks, but you are not doing them at the same time. Yes, you are kind of doing them at the same time, but not exactly. You are putting down your phone, then you are eat, picking up the bowl to eat the rice, and then you are putting down the bowl, and then you are using the remote to turn on the AC. Now, this is exactly what is being represented in the first, which is concurrency. Yes, you are allowed to do multiple tasks, but your task is going to be done. You are doing one task up here, and by the way, this uh, left to right, the horizontal axis is the time. So, at one given time, you are only doing just one task. Yes, you are allowed to switch on to these tasks. Task. First you are uh, eating rice, then in the second bar you are using Instagram, no other social media. <laughs> and in this one you are just turning on the AC, then you went back up into eating the rice and then you are again going back to probably turn off the air condition. So you are allowed to do so. While on the other hand the parallelism is different. Parallelism is you are eating your rice with one hand with one spoon you put up the rice in your mouth you're checking the instagram you're turning on the ac and uh, getting back onto your rice and food this is parallelism you're doing all the things at the one task this is almost like you have got a lot of friends and you are arranging a marriage at your home and you have just assigned the task to different different friends and they are all doing the same thing at a time not just switching into the task and that is the major difference between the concurrency and parallelism so always remember the instagram and you'll never forget that okay Quite a lot of theory. Now let's go ahead and move on. Just there are two more presentation up here for the entire course. Go routines. Now go routines is the way how you achieve this parallelism. So that's really simple. Now go routines often are being compared with the threads as well. Uh, but there are just two uh, major differences up here. The threads are managed by OS. On the other hand, the go routines are managed by the go runtime. So Go Runtime can actually fire up more threads without even getting permission from OS. Of course, of course, I get the idea. OS is responsible for allotting you threads. I get that 100%. But in this, the more control is actually in the Go Runtime. And that is the reason why this language is more popular in the cloud. Because in the cloud environment, we have no shortage of these threads and we can take advantage of all of them. 
and in the thread there is a fixed stack being used of 1 MB uh, surely we can refer to other memories to read and write and can increase that but by default the threads are 1 MB that is like the minimum of uh, having a thread while in the go routine the threads are of just uh, 2 KB so you can imagine just in a limited amount of memory how many threads you can fire up and each thread can be responsible for bringing up more data maybe you are hitting up 12 different APIs and you can fire up each thread to bring up data from each of those APIs. So that will be done so much faster. Now let's go ahead. Of course, we're going to have an example. But before that, I would like to bring you a kind of a motto, you would say a slogan for the Golang, which you're going to hear a lot, a lot here. Do not communicate by sharing a memory. Instead, share memory for communicating. Now, eventually, when we move on to the channel part, uh, you're going to understand it more. But this is like the line that you should write it somewhere. You're going to see this on every article on Golang page. Uh, probably anything discussion which has to do with Go routines, you're going to see this a lot. And this is kind of a principle that is being followed with that. OK, quite a lot. Now, let's go ahead and see that how we can create these Go routines is the, in the easier way. But as I said, we are going to be creating multiple Go routines. We'll have a couple of examples to go through with work with them. And again, these examples are not all mine. I have taken up some from the different resources, books, and a whole bunch of things which I studied while preparing uh, for the Golang one when I was doing the project. So yes, they are coming up from a whole lot of resources. So again, just giving you uh, that in advance. Let's go ahead and create a new folder. We're going to call this one as 26. This one is Go Routines. Uh, there we go. And we're going to just create a main file up here. So let's go ahead and say main.go. And let's initialize the mod now that we are fully aware of the mods. We spend a lot of time in there. So go mod in it. And let's call this one as go routines. Okay, should be nice and happy. Now the basic stuff is going to remain same. We are going to have a package and we are going to have a function, function that says uh, main. Okay, so once we have this main method, I'm going to just close it down. We're going to create a simple function and this function is going to be greeter. And yes, we have created this greeter method a couple of times, so you should be very familiar with that. Uh, the whole idea behind that is to simply go ahead and uh, print out a simple string, whatever you pass on into that. So we're going to design it in a simple way that if you pass on any string to that, so let's call this one as s string, there we go. Now the idea is whoever calls this greeter is going to just print it out. So that's basically it. That's that's all what we want to do. But we don't want to do it like that way. We want to print it uh, five times. So we're going to just cut this out and we're going to run a simple loop. So let's go ahead and run a simple loop. And can you suggest me? And looks like, nope. Yeah, it, it suggests me. <laughs> there we go. So we start with i equals zero. We go ahead and run it to uh, maybe six times so that it prints out five times and there we go we prints it out so there we go we see no problem at all we have a greeter method which prints out whatever message you pass it on uh, five times so let's go ahead and save this one now inside the main method what we're going to do is we are going to just say that i want to call this method so i'm going to go ahead and say that i'm calling this greeter and first i'm passing you a string of hello and then again i'm going to go ahead and pass on a string which says world. Now, can you expect what is going to happen? Shouldn't be a big deal. We are so far into the course. Please don't do this. OK, so in the go routines, let's go ahead and say go run main.go. And we see that we got a couple of times. In fact, let me scroll that up. There we go. So we saw that a couple of time a hello is being printed and then a couple of time world is being printed. How is it happening? First, the greeter method is called with a hello. So this function is running up. Uh, five times to print hello then again the control is switched back onto the main method and the greeter is being called with the world and now the world is being printed five times okay so how do you create a go routine the go routine is simply created by adding a keyword go now this is the very first time we are seeing the go keyword the language is go but this is the very first time we are seeing it now what this will do this might surprise you a little bit especially in this case where we are not doing anything uh, extraordinary here. Let me go ahead and run this one. It just prints the world and this surprised a lot of people. The reason why it surprised a lot of people, let me go back onto the diagram to make you understand why this is happening. So notice here in the parallelism, I told you that uh, let's just say you are doing all of this task up here, but this is a kind of situation 
uh, where you got involved too much in social media that you forgot to turn on your AC and you forgot to eat the food and the food is just gone. You are just engaged in the social media only. This exactly same thing happened as soon as you use the Go. So you said that, hey, just fire up a thread which is going to be further responsible for uh, executing this greeter with hello, but you never said when to come back or you never waited for it to come back. The main method actually exists as soon as uh, all the methods are being fired up and that's pretty much it. So we never waited for that thread to come back and print those methods. So that is why you see just the world here. So how we can go ahead and work on with that? Now there are a couple of hacks that we can use which I honestly don't like. The one of them is time dot you can use a sleep method and can say, hey, I'm going to go ahead and sleep uh, probably five seconds. So we're going to say five uh, time dot uh, second. I know this is too long. I think we can just wait for three seconds. That should be it. Now let's go ahead and try that again. And uh, three seconds, it is going to wait for three seconds. And now we see that uh, world is being printed. Hello is being printed. So we are keep on waiting. So every single time the loop is waiting and we are just going and working like that. So this is how this is going to work. Now I know this is too much of a wait. So let me go ahead and kill that and try to go for a millisecond. So we're going to go ahead and let me go ahead and say microsecond now. Millisecond. Let's go ahead and try this out. Should be much more faster now. So there we go, much more faster. So this time we see that we have hello and now the world is being printed. Again, world is being printed and then hello. So you might have noticed that we are firing up our different threads and as soon as the threads job is done, then it's coming back and we are receiving that. And as soon as we receive that, whenever we receive that execution of that thread or the result of that thread, we are just printing it. So this is how we can do it. But obviously you can know that, that this is not an ideal way of handling the situation. Yes, we get the problem, that the problem is not that we are not waiting for the thread and the main method ends its execution, but having a time here is not an obvious solution. So we do have packages for that as well. We will obviously talk about that in the future, but just to give you a brief idea on that, I can actually directly say pkg.go.dev and there is a dedicated for package for that, if I can write that correctly. And there we go, sync package. And there we go. The package provides basic synchronization primitives such as uh, mutual exclusion logs. Uh, this is mutex, uh, full farm. Uh, other than once, weight group types and a whole lot of that. So we will come on to that part, but just giving you idea that this is how we actually prefer to do it, not just by sleeping that. Okay, quite a lot of stuff, but now you are pretty much clear that how GoRoutine works, we have to wait for that, how parallelism work and a bunch of other stuff. I hope you have enjoyed this one. I'll continue this example in the next video so that you have more clarity about this concurrency. Let's go ahead and catch up in next video.